We are in section 6.4, work. Work is the amount of energy required to perform a physical task. In physics, it has a technical meaning that depends on the idea of force. So force can be thought of as a pushing or pulling of an object. Force of an object in the same direction is given by Newton's second law of motion, F equals M times A or mass times acceleration. Really quick, weight is a force. Some students will have more of a physics background and a better understanding of this than others. So when force is constant, so not changing, work can be simply calculated using the equation W equals F times D. And again, F, our force, is mass times acceleration, and for us if it's constant, it would be gravity times d, our displacement, and this would be gravity, and gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Where w is work, f is a constant force, and d is the distance the object has moved. The units of force are commonly newtons, and I put the units in there, or pounds. The units of work are commonly newton meters, which are called joules, or foot pounds. So we have an example right below this that says how much work is done when a hoist lifts a 200 kilogram rock to a height of three meters. And so we know that work is equal to force times that distance. And it's a constant force. And our constant force would be gravity. So we have m times g times d. And that mass would be 200 kilograms. Gravity, as stated up above, is 9.8, and this is meters per second squared. And that distance is going to be 3 meters. Multiplying those first two numbers together, we get 1,960, and those units would be kilograms times meters over second squared. And then we still need to multiply by 3 meters. But I want to look at this which is going to be defined as a newton and then multiplying the 1960 times the 3 we get 5880 and these are newton meters or joules so frequently the force is not constant it's going to be more of the issue that we're dealing with and so when the force is not constant, it'll be changing over time. In order to solve for work with a variable force, the following integral equation must be used. So work is going to be equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx, where w is work, and f of x is going to be the force of the function of distance, and x is going to be the distance. So again, it's changing over time. And so work done by moving an object from A to B is going to be defined by, as stated up above, the integral from A to B of f of x dx. If an ideal spring is stretched or compressed x units beyond its natural length, then by Hooke's law, it states that the force required to maintain a spring stretched x units beyond its natural length, so beyond its natural length, is proportional to x. So f of x would be equal to kx. And again, f of x would be our force, where k is a positive constant called our spring constant. So the example right below this deals with springs. I'm going to go ahead and circle this example, and we will look at this one together in class. The next example we have is dealing with a rope and the work required to pull that rope up to the top. 
and this example we will also be looking at together in class. And then the next thing that we're talking about is pumping a liquid out of the top of a tank requires work because the liquid is moving against gravity. To calculate this, we must imagine the work required to lift small disks of liquid up and out of the tank. So we carefully are going to be lifting up a series of masses against gravity and allowing the liquid to spill out once at the top it's reached. Remember that weight is equal to mass times force of gravity, or W is equal to M times G. And our mass is going to be equal to the volume times our density of whatever liquid it is that we're dealing with. Where W is weight, M is mass, G is the gravitational constant. It's either 32 feet per second squared or 9.8 meters per second squared. In these types of problems, sometimes weight is provided and sometimes mass is provided. So sometimes you're going to be given weight and sometimes you're going to be given mass. What varies in these systems is the distance each disk needs to be lifted. So again, we are dealing with disk like we saw a few sections ago. Measures by taking the total height and subtracting the present height of the remaining liquid X and the volume of each disk. It could also be different shaped. So we could have a rectangular region or a triangular region, um, some kind of shape though. So we have an example right below this that says, find the work done by pumping out water from the top of a cylindrical tank three feet in radius and 10 feet tall if the tank is initially full. The density of water is given as 62.4 pounds per feet cubed. And so the first thing that we're gonna do in order to do this problem is I'm gonna sketch our cylindrical tank. And so drawing it, And it's given that the radius is three feet. And it's also given that the height is 10 feet. And so if we were to think about little disks of water, really small disks of water being pushed up and out of this tank, I'm gonna draw one of those disks that we would have. And so our disc here, since we have a total amount that has to be pushed up all of these, this first part here, this disc, is already a set amount away from the top. And I'm going to call that X because it depends on where it is in that cylindrical tank. And that would mean that below that would be 10 minus X. And so the first thing that we are going to do is let's just talk about this disk. And let's find the volume of our disk. And volume is equal to pi r squared h. And so the disk has a radius of 3. And our height, we'll call this delta x. And again, we're just talking about the disk. So our volume is going to be pi times 3 squared times delta x. And we are dealing with um, feet. So it's going to be feet cubed. And so this works out to be 9 pi delta x feet cubed. So the second thing we need to think about is mass because we are dealing with water and it's not like an oil or something else. So the density of water is given at 62.4 pounds per feet cubed. So second thing we're going to do is find mass. 
and mass is equal to volume times density. And so for this problem, volume, we just found, we calculated it as 9 pi delta x feet cubed. And I try to keep the units with this as I go so I can make sure that my units are aligning correctly. Times the 62.4 and it's pounds per feet cubed. And so working this out, we get 561.6 pi delta x and then our feet cubes would cancel and we'd be left over with pounds. So right now we have calculated the mass of that disk and so from here we need to find the work to push this disk up and out of the tank and so this is going to be find work for the disk. So I'll say find work and work is equal to stated up above mass times our height to get that disk out of that tank and we have mass we just found that up above and so work is going to be 561.6 pi delta x and our units were pounds times the height and the height that we defined over here on our on our shape was x so I'm going to call it x and our units that we were using were feet and then from here that's the work to get that one disk out our last step would be to find that total work so find total work and I'll put my limits of integration on in just a sec but our function is going to be the 561.6 pi times x and then again delta x would be our dx and we are going to be integrating that whole height so this is going to go from 0 to 10 and so integrating this we get 561.6 pi over 2 times x squared and again we're evaluating this from 0 to 10 and so we get 561 Point six pi over 2 times 10 minus substituting 0 we get 0 and so this works out to being 28,000.80 pi and our units here are going to be in foot pounds and so sometimes you'll see them where they don't have it with the pi in there, they'll actually multiply it out. So we can say, or it's 88,215.92 foot-pounds. It just depends on how they would like your answer expressed. So we have another example on the next page. This time though, we're not dealing with a cylindrical tank, we're actually dealing with a rectangular prism. So same idea, but we will go ahead and look at this one together in class.